A long time ago on a map far, far away, a strange presence was felt. Something was hiding behind the dunes of Sand River, attacking anyone on sight. Some tried to return fire, but they only struck the sand. These elusive ghosts were the three new Swedish medium tanks. Using hydro-pneumatic suspension, they adjust their hull depression angle and that of the gun too. This feature, coupled with high alpha damage, is an ideal combination for those wishing to hide amongst the sand dunes, including the chief, the Udes 1516. The first thought that comes to mind when looking at the Udes 1516 is that it's come from outer space. Very unlike conventional tanks. Sharp, aggressive lines, a futuristic shape. It's the kind of tank a child would want to draw. This was the final result, at best. Its sci-fi style isn't the only thing that makes this Swede stand out. Here comes its unorthodox suspension system. When at a speed lower than 10 kilometers per hour, it enables the vehicle to recline the hull, elevating the gun by 25 degrees, or incline it, depressing the gun by 13 degrees. Note, if the gun is turned, its depression won't be as impressive. The advantage dwindles as the turret rotates. The suspension resumes its standard configuration when speeds above 23 km per hour are hit. Unlike the STRV-103B, it operates automatically and instantaneously. When a medium tank peeks from behind a hill, it might just look like this. When the UDES does the same, you get it. Carefully approaching a hill, the Udes depresses its gun, preparing to fire. It hits. Decent damage. The enemy wants to return the favor, but the enemy is confused. The upper glacis plate is 60 millimeters thick, the hull roof is 50, and the turret front is predominantly 100. That's far from impressive. The thickest areas are the gun mantlet and the cupulas. The trick is in the armor slope angles. The similarity to Swedish tank destroyers is evident. However, where the STRV-103B gambles on chance, the turret of the UDES deflects all AP and APCR projectiles in the game. And since this is how most enemies see the UDES, heat shells cannot force their way through the colossal 445 millimeters of effective armor. After firing, the UDES drives back to cover. It boasts a reverse speed of 24 km per hour, faster than any other tier 10 medium. Forward speed isn't so impressive, on par with the T-62A. Hull traverse speed, same as the pattern. Fighting out in the open, the UDES loses some of its charm. Its hull gets penetrated without much effort. With fuel tanks and its engine at the front, any hit on the glacis plate may set the vehicle on fire. Just carry a fire extinguisher with you at all times. The rear turret placement allows for side scraping. However, should you make the slightest error in positioning or get on the receiving end of calibers above 150 millimeters, you get the picture. Yet, for every so-so parameter, the Swede has something considerable. Speaking of the Udes 1516, its concealment suddenly enters the frame. The low outline and modest size make this vehicle the hardest tier 10 medium tank to spot. Unsurprisingly, it's not the greatest of scouts as its base view range is 390 meters. 
to spot an enemy, the Swede has to drive closer than, say, the pattern, and it can do so undetected. Even better, a moving Udes is harder to spot than the static American giant. For the Swede, it's important to realize that you're the one to shoot first, no matter what. The base shell can penetrate 254 millimeters of armor and the special shell, 310. Its aiming time and dispersion are average. The gun is well stabilized but lacks in shell velocity compared to Soviet medium tanks or the STRV. Hence, two points to remember. The Udez is not a long-range sniper and it needs time to aim. And here, yet another curious detail is revealed. Swedish engineers armed the Udes with a truly devastating gun. The base APCR shell deals 440 points of damage, as does the heat. The high alpha results in a decent damage per minute too. Anyone playing the Udes 1516 needs just five penetrating shots per battle to deal their own hit points in damage. After that, prepare for the envious looks from your allies. It reloads slower than Soviet medium tanks, but the Udes has its own benefit here. For example, the Object 140 has to keep firing at all times to maintain its DPM. Whereas, the Swede has about 8 seconds free to change its firing position. The Udes 1516 will act differently depending on the map. An ideal spot is a bushy hill about 150 meters away from the enemy. You won't have any trouble finding one on, say, steps. Slow down as you approach the position. The suspension changes the mode, then speed up a bit. This way you arrive ready for action just like other medium tanks, not at a snail's pace like the SDRV. The gun elevation adjusts slower with suspension movement compared to free traverse. Just keep that in mind when firing at moving targets. Knolls without any vegetation will also do. The Swede can deflect shells with its turret while utilizing the amazing gun depression. Retreat after each shot, relocate and repeat the trick. Its gun depression allows the Udes to fire from spots unavailable to others. If bushes are the only cover available, your concealment will save you, but don't bet everything on it. Bushes may be fine for your first shot, but then it's best to drive closer to the enemy to score more hits. In urban areas, hide your hull. Otherwise, stay behind friendly heavies and assist them. As a last resort, side scrape and trade fire with those who have lower alpha damage. Make use of the vehicle's advantages. For instance, the path up to the castle on Himmelsdorf, while others suffer, the Udes revels in ricochets and delight. If your position does not enable you to play effectively, remember that you are a medium tank and can relocate. The Swede can be further improved with the right equipment. Several loadouts are possible. If you want to deal damage, mind ventilation, gun rammer and stabilizer. For an aggressive scout, choose ventilation, coated optics and stabilizer. Don't forget about equipment bought with bonds. It will beef you up even more. The tank has three crew members, so the commander and the gunner have several specializations. Useful skills and perks for the commander are sixth sense, repairs and concealment. Then you can select Brothers in Arms, Situational Awareness or Recon. Concealment, Repairs and Deadeye are a must for the gunner. After that, they can learn either Brothers in Arms, Safe Stowage or Sharp Shot. The driver should learn Concealment, Repairs and Off-Road Driving. Once these are mastered, Brothers in Arms, Clutch Braking or Smooth Ride will be fine. This way, the Udes gradually become specialized in whatever you need. Medium tanks in our game are often multi-purpose vehicles. 
They can shoot well, deflect some shots, relocate quickly and go on recon if needed. The beauty of the UDES 1516 is that it does all this but in its own way. Just don't forget that it requires certain conditions to perform at its best. It's nice to have the damage of a heavy tank in a medium, don't you think? When you can chomp 500 hit points off your target, the other mediums become envious. The UDES 1516 remains undetected where others are spotted. It deals serious damage. It takes advantage of map landscapes like a heavy. It can trade hit points if needed. It uses spots that others wouldn't dream of. It has its own playstyle, unlike that of any other medium tank. That's what adds luster to the vehicle.